Hello, everybody. My name is Ari, and you're listening to Bass Tunes on KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. Today, I have a guest for the first time in so long. It's great. Um, it's actually someone listened in on the show last week because I was like, hey, if anybody wants to come on, you should go to, and this is an open invitation to anybody, Bass Tunes KUCI on Instagram, B-A-S-E-D-T-U-N-E-S, KUCI on Instagram, and... She hit me up. This is Moxie, a promoter, runs a DIY venue, does getting into other sort of stuff, films, runs for a magazine, does a lot of the similar stuff that I ended up uh, doing for the station, although I guess on a, I guess, more widespread scale. Uh, hi, Moxie. Welcome to the show. Hi. Glad to be here. Good. Move back a little closer. I'm glad. Um I guess my first question, I guess, tell us a little bit about what you do in terms of promoting and whatever you do in that regard. Well, I guess I do a lot. I um, started this like Instagram page a couple years ago called SoCal Emo, where I posted like all the local kind of screamo shows when it was kind of more in its infancy. Um, and then as it kind of grew, I kind of got more into the local scene. And one of my friends helped me... Uh, uh, start booking a, a venue called La Santa and then I uh, just started booking more shows and now it kind of led to me uh, running this uh, DIY venue with a, a good friend of mine but as well while I was doing all that uh, me I joined this uh, local magazine that m- a friend of mine was running called Verse Magazine and uh, we were kind of like touring with some bands like up to the bay and uh just following bands around, filming them, interviewing them, and then eventually that led to us working with uh, an artist called Wisp, um, going up to the bay to film her concerts and uh, even interview her, which is something we have on the way to being published. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I guess my first question is, when did you get started doing all this? Um, I got started like five years ago. Oh, wow. Um, when the instead of the screamo scene, there was like a really popular kind of like punk hardcore scene in uh, Orange County. Mm. And um, I got started. I threw my first show and it got like super big because I threw it like in- <laughs> inside an active Denny's restaurant. And, oh, it's like a uh, 3 a.m. Denny's thing. Uh, yeah, but it was like, I think it was like, you know, at a normal time, a show started and there's oh. like still families like <laughs> oh, eating wow. inside. How'd you get that? Um, I just called, like, I looked up Denny's <laughs> on my, back then there was like this, the original Denny's meme c- floating around and uh, I kind of shot that idea of like, what if I like did that as my first show and my friend supported it and I actually went through with it and I looked up Denny's and Google Maps or something and then called the first one that popped up and they said yes and I was like, okay. That's pretty cool. Do you have to like pay them or something for the time, or I assume so, right? I ended up having to pay like eighteen hundred dollars oh, because of geez. damages. Oh, okay. Because they kind of, because like a lot of people showed up. It got okay. like really, like spread, and like Jeez. I think like four hundred people showed up to this to this Denny's restaurant, mind you. That's probably not rated for more than I don't know one hundred fifty. Yeah, that's um, that's crazy. <laughs> we sold like I think one hundred and twenty tickets at the door, okay. and then like. Um, what happened? Oh uh, yeah, someone opened up the fire escape and then, or the you know the fire door or whatever. Yeah, yeah and people just kept flooding in. Or oh yeah, and it got like absolutely packed, and it only lasted like thirty five minutes, I think. What happened? Um, the v- people kept smoking cigarettes inside. And oh the yeah, the manager was like, "Hey, I'm gonna call the cops." So I was like, "Okay, I guess I gotta you know shut it down." And then we just moved it to a different spot. Like, I think a few miles away, like, uh-huh. underneath a bridge. I mean, that seems more apt for, like, a local scene thing if it's just in the middle of under a bridge. <laughs> yeah. I guess Denny's was the vision, though. No, yeah. it was just, That was just, like, oh, that would be really funny if I did that. And then I guess I did do that. And then it got, like, super big. I was only, like, 17. Jeez. Um, and it got, like, really, like people started like calling me to interview me like a inside edition and oh Billboard yeah magazine what are you gonna do yeah you do something crazy like that so you'd say that your uh sort of career in this got started with i wouldn't say it's kind of like a stunt right just like a big sort of thing yeah. i wouldn't say like a stunt because you were actually trying to do it but it ended up having like that sort of big effect 
did you expect that to happen or absolutely not i didn't i i kind of just was like yeah i guess i'll do this and i wasn't even thinking of like the consequences or like anything like that i was just like i think this would be cool and then like as it was starting to ha- like come up like m- different people would come at me like giving me advice on what i should do because it was like my first show ever yeah um that i ever threw and i had no experience other than just like going to local shows that were usually like at back like backyards or um, yeah i've been to a few of those or at malone's bar if anyone remembers that and uh Mm-mm. i shut down during covid sadly but i saw some pretty cool shows there um and uh yeah, no, I didn't expect it at all. It could, like drastically changed my life forever because um, it, it made me realize I wanted to get into music, uh, work in the industry, like behind the scenes and, uh, um, and, and like contribute to a local community. I thought that was really cool and really fun. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. What were you thinking about doing, I guess, before that, before any of this started happening? Because you said it totally changed the course of your life. Do you have any recollection of that or as much as you're willing to share, I guess? I think I wanted to be like a fashion designer, Mm, um, but like my heart wasn't really into it, but I just didn't really know what else to do. I kind of was like, oh, I guess I'll graduate high school maybe and go to OCC and like figure it out then. But I really, I was kind of aimless. I really didn't know what I was truly passionate about. Um, I just like all I knew is like I had like this creative energy that I wanted to express and uh, like, but I just didn't really know how to for like a long time. Mm. So your friends were also in this scene, and that's sort of how they got you to, I guess, I guess coax you to not coax you, but like convinced you, I guess, to like finally book a show, or were you wanting to do that for a while, or? I was. Um, it was more like I came. I saw like the memes <laughs> on oh, Instagram. Oh, the, the 3M Denny's. Yeah, uh, the one in Texas. Oh, I think that was yeah. I don't remember, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it, it was the one in Texas with this. Uh, I can't remember the band sadly, but they they did a really cool, really fucking awesome show. Really You're awesome good. show, and uh, um, and that one I think was like an abandoned one. And, uh, an abandoned Denny's. Yeah, they did it in abandoned Denny's, but mine was like an active, like actual active restaurant. Um, oh wow! Yeah, I remember there was like footage of so, like <laughs> this dad and his two daughters just trying to eat <laughs> eat like a uh, a meal like not even like fifteen feet away from this room where. Gosh, I would like, I would hate to be that dad. No hate. <laughs> No, seriously. just like having like daughters like, hey, kids, let's go to Denny's. Let's have a nice all American breakfast or whatever or dinner breakfast. I don't know. And then it's just a loud punk. I don't know what I would do in that situation. I'd probably be like, OK, I got to get out of here for a second because kids are so sound sensitive, you know? I know. Yeah. I mean, is it it's ever like idea, calm though. or like like chill out of Denny's after like 6 p.m. though? Like, I mean, every time I've gone to a Denny's is like late at night when I'm with my friends and everybody's like, oh, everyone's kind of, you know, sauced up or whatever. And like, let's go to Denny's. And it's like dead, <laughs> just straight dead. Like we're the only people there. And we're just like, we need, I need pancake. So all I remember, that's the, I think last time I, when's the last time you went to a Denny's? I uh, actually, I don't like Denny's food. It's controversial not, it's opinion. It's not really that good. It's not really a controversial no. opinion. All my friends like give me a hard time about it, but really? like, I just don't. I don't like any other food, so I don't. I don't really like going to like cheap diner food. Ironically, because all my friends were like, "Oh, wouldn't you like like it because of that?" But like, no, I don't. I don't like their food. You wouldn't like it. Oh, you, they think you'd like it because of the uh, thing you did. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was there last thursday i don't know when the last time is because school's out so i guess when school starts and if my friends are if i have friends they're like dude let's go to denny's and i'm like okay you know what four pancakes was that like seven bucks max like okay give me four pancakes i'll eat that Mm. when i was absolutely off my rocker last week i was like "Ooh, (laughs) pancakes i don't even remember that was a fun night though (laughs) um let's yeah when did you get into like video content then? Because the promoting thing was about five years ago, right? Yeah. How about doing the filming? So, um, that's a good question. I've kind of like been filming a little bit 
for like four years but like when i first got into it i got like a gl2 camera with like a fisheye lens and i was just like filming my friends skating and oh you're in that you're in that group i was like at least like a lot uh some of my friends at that time uh my friend sebastian from um glendale and uh my my other friend zay from back then we would always skate uh up there and just like i would film and i loved filming and uh i kind of got like fell out of it and then like i think like last year um i like started working with my friend mikey vega and um Mm. shout out to that guy yeah shout out to him he's my best friend oh Uh, yeah shout out then yeah i love that guy and uh yeah, he had a camera, and I was uh, f- using his camera to film. Like, we uh, were at a Julie show uh, at my oh friend's yeah, backyard, and we interviewed them um, at that show, and we were just uh, using his camera. And then hmm. I was kind of th- – and then I saw my friend post online. His name's Cayman, and uh, he was selling his uh, HVX 200. And I just bought it from him, and I started using that to film, like, shows, uh – remember I, I think one of the first shows i used to film it it was like a widow dusk and versera uh show at the tamarack that hmm. my friend violet aka bucky zine uh threw up in uh oakland and oh, yeah, uh, oakland. yeah so i just kind of like fell in love with it i love uh, filming uh recently i've been getting more into like film photography and like shooting polaroids oh, uh, yeah. at shows um and just like a general things i'm at so you'd say your main interest then is generally music then, yeah? That's sort of where it all started from? Yeah, I love, like, music. I love underground culture, especially. Um, like, I'm really into, like, the underground kind of, like, fashion scenes and art scenes, like uh, Unrad Motions or Zo- Zoe Alameda, uh, whatever, like, kind of, like, art shows she's presenting at oh, okay. with, like, the other kids from, uh, or the other people, artists from USC. I love uh, always seeing what they're up to, and uh, just I'm just really into like I guess like more underground culture. That makes sense. Um, on the topic of music, here's a random question: What was like the first? Do you remember the first concert you ever went to? I do. It was one. Oh wait, no, it was Big Time Rush at <laughs> at the OC Fair when I was in fifth grade, like 2013. Oh, Big time rush. That takes me back. I know. Yeah. It was a really good concert too. They, really? They, they, can, they can perform really well. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know if they were like actually good or if it was just some like lip syncing BS like normal. No, they were putting their hearts into it. I remember as a, uh, I think, God, I must have been like 11. Wow. Um, no, they, were, they, they had passion and a lot of soul. And, uh, I mean, I, I still listen to their music now, like, like Boyfriend and uh, Worldwide. Hey, no hate. Bangers. No hate. A lot mm-hmm. of people probably still do. I mean, yeah. I mean, they, I they like did that tour again. Wait, when was that? Like, I think a year ago they went on tour serious? again. Yeah. It feels like people... It feels like our age group is, like, getting back into... We're, like, simul... We talked about this before we actually, like, went on. Mm. But I feel like we're, like, simultaneously into, like, 2000s culture. And we're also also just, like, going back to nostalgia for about, like, 10 years ago. We're yeah. kind of bouncing back and forth between early... to Like, just... 2002 maybe i don't know to 2012 maybe i'd say even like 2015 it's like any time that's not within the last but then again thinking about the fact that 2015 was is going to be 10 years ago soon is just kind of a head trip Mm. so i guess it makes sense but i was always like man all this the new wave of nostalgia is just kind of like kind of just a trip for me Dude, I've seen people yearn for 2018. That was like fashion, dude, and that was like that know. was not even I guess like what? Oh my god, like six years ago? Yeah, that's like nothing. Mm. I wait, yeah, six years. I do math, hand counting. I'm a hand counter. <laughs> I still count on my hands. I don't care. You gotta be, do what you gotta do. Gotta do what you gotta do. Mm. No, but like that is kind of that is just crazy to me. I, don't know. I I mean, there are also like I guess younger kids, you know, yeah. like, people who are like I guess like sixteen now, you know. The Gen Alphas aren't they? Gen, are they Gen Alpha at this point or no? I think so. I mean, yeah, Gen Alpha. If Gen Alpha is about four to five years after I was born, then I'm like, man, yeah. What are what are what are the, what are those kids going to be into in the in nostalgic for man? What are those kids going to be? COVID. 
It's going to be quarantine. How are they going to be nostalgic for that? That was horrible. I know. They're just going to be like, I oh, can... yeah, like, I wish I could be doing nothing all day. Dude, no, I was, like, you don't. Up till, you don't. I was up till 9 a.m. Oh. every single day. I was up till, like, 4 then. It was the worst. I remember, like, the first week. I remember the last day I was there. I was on my, I was just like, it was a little empty, just like regular on my phone. Like, oh, they're announcing new Call of Duty Warzone. Wow. And I was like, so, I'm a huge COD fan, anyways. Mm. So I like, so Monday. So I guess I missed the last two days of school or whatever. I just didn't go. And then you know Monday I was like, wow, Warzone's out. And then like for like the first two weeks, I'm like, wow, there's like three new games I'm gonna play a ton. And then after that, I was like, oh wow, this is horrible. But that's all yeah. to say. If they're actually, I know they're going to be nostalgic for this, but to any Gen Alpha is listening right now, it wasn't good. No, it was not good. Okay, you can stay and be like, oh, it was a struggle. Yeah, it was horrible, man. Like nobody actually. I mean, I'm sure people still liked being a lot more like just like being cooped up in their house a bit. Mm. Like you can still do that now. You can just get you can get COVID today. You could just be sick well, for ten days or something. It's five days now. I got it like once, and I was like five days, and I was back in back to work. Mm. They, I mean, I texted my boss. I just want to ask, like, hey, is it five days? Because I wanted some. I wanted my minimum wage mm. Starbucks job. Hustle. You really work at Starbucks? I used to. Yeah. I used to. I uh, I quit in, like, November. It's just like I got other jobs at the school. Sam, I also work, used to work at Starbucks. Very uh, on the trans stereotype. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I, I did not like working that job. Unless I need to work there again. Then I loved working there. I mean, you can still, like, not like to work a job, and they're not going to be like, you aren't a corporate lover. You didn't love working there. <laughs> I, every day I walked into that job, I was like, it's a job. Oh, what do you think of the job? I'm like, it's a job. It pays me. Like, I don't know. It's pretty close to my house, and I don't have to work that many hours. It's nice. But, I mean, it was, it was okay, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it is kind of a uh, – yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's a stereotype. I feel like we were talking about something about nostalgia. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I have a <laughs> list of questions here, but I'm sort of going to them. But I think it's more fun to just sort of go on and off. And, you know, it's cool. True, true. Let's say this then. Here's an interesting one. All right. Uh, what are some of the best parts about being a promoter, in your opinion? Um, I would definitely say just, like, being able to give, like, a safe space to, like, to people who are, like, passionate about music, uh, especially, like like knowing that like i'm like impacting people and i'm like i guess like impacting the youth quote unquote the same way that i was impacted when i was 16 going yeah. to like all ages shows and like and like people have come up to me and like i guess like <laughs> i guess thanked me i guess like for doing the work that i do and like telling That's me how cool. it's like impacted them and that just means the world to me genuinely like yeah. just seeing the change I can make and the contributions that I can make to a community that I'm passionate about is, I would say, the best thing. Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool thing. What are some of the parts that aren't as good, just in your experience? There's a lot of like behind the scenes drama that's uh, like yeah. very high school esque. That's how it feels. It's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, some of it's like valid, but some yeah. of it's like, oh yeah, you guys are like all like 18 years old or something all these like because all the people in the bands are like like you know just graduating high school oh you're oh those are the type of oh yeah your shows are like all ages then are you trying to do that sort of thing like um i mean it's kind of like kind of have to because like or you're gonna miss out on a lot of tickets yeah and, like, and not only that but like you know it, like compared to other all ages shows that like have like gnaws and like stuff like that oh, it's good gosh. to like be able to provide a good space where there's not gonna be like any alcohol or oh you're like, trying to like enforce you try to enforce that at your shows i do like that's good i mean i don't usually see anyone because oh, i i usually throw screamo shows i'm not throwing like punk shows oh yeah i guess i guess scre is screamo like kind of one of those uh straight edge sort of things there, or not really there's a lot of straight edge uh there's also a lot of people that drink but i don't really see anyone drinking at my shows though no. uh, yeah i guess they're like pre-gaming it or whatever but I, at the most i'll see like i guess weed but like oh I'm, no <gasps> i know oh yeah my God. not like i wasn't doing that when i was like 15 yeah, me know. too like what <laughs> i feel like that's like a, me a median age it's a rite of passage i guess just to try it and do be like get scared yeah i i I didn't really like it, but you know I'm chilling now. I never liked it, but I would just do it because my friends were doing it. But uh, I would always, yeah. I would, I'd green out every single time. 
I mean, I, I did a lot. I don't like, think I ever did that. Um, I think I've tried it like a few. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, the last time I've done it was in January, just to say, hey, what's up? Because I was traveling with some people, and it was like, yeah, my girlfriend's friends. They, my girlfriend's like my girlfriend's best friend and her boyfriend were coming with us just up to this mountain. It was cool, and they, uh, they like their stuff a lot. So they would do it relatively often, which is fine by me because they were doing it like, you know, outside. I don't really care. And the funny thing was, I remember just like trying it like once. And I was like, sure, why not a little? And then I was like, oh, this is why I didn't do it. Oh, boy. <laughs> that led to a that, that was a very fun night. That's so real. But yeah, I mean, it's fine. I woke up the next day. Not even the next day. I was like a few hours. I was like, I'm cool. But anyways, uh, that is cool. So you would say one of the sort of negative things about being a promoter is sort of like just the internal drama around the, the, just like the just like the behind the scenes whatever from the, was it like the bands and things like that or yeah it's like it's just like trying to make the scene safe. It's oh, like a yeah. lot of he she he said she said and mm. you really gotta take it like at face value. You, you kind of have to and like but sometimes like. It just doesn't happen like often, but sometimes it's like, oh, the wrong person, like the you know, lies are spread and people like, make stuff up about other people. Y- rarely. Yeah, I'm not saying all the time. Yeah, a lot of most of the time, genuinely, yeah, it's like evil true. people, like abusers, and yeah. like, that's why you gotta take it at face value because yeah. like you can't risk like accidentally empowering someone's abuser. Yeah, and, why, like, why would you do that? That's yeah, stupid. exactly. So it's like you kind of have to like guilty first and proven innocent later you yeah know? And, yeah uh, so that sometimes that like really hurts the wrong person yeah and it kind of gets like people get carried away and you know it's just uh it's really sad um and there's nothing you can really do about it because no, really. um you risk like empowering an abuser and yeah you, you have to that. you have to be very like zero tom to that sort of stuff especially if you're if you're trying to make this like super safe space for younger people who can just go and have fun and not, you know, get into whatever kinds of trouble exactly. and like bad situations that a lot of people end up doing it, maybe even in like I would I don't even know about music. I feel like that stuff kind of happens, but but there's in all the scenes that I've been in, not like scenes, but all the places that I've been in, most of the people at the head are usually just solid people. Who are like we just want to have fun and we just want other individuals to have the same amount of fun that we could have had. Like as you said, like when we were kids and go to these shows and it's super fun and we want the same thing for the next generation yeah but that can be very challenging you know oh no yeah it proves like it's like <laughs> it's like a lot easier not to think about it when you're like a kid but there's like genuinely so much that goes into it like being an adult and like providing this i guess like a service to a younger generation like you know there's so much like danger it's genuinely like there's so much danger when it comes to like an all-age show that could happen and Uh like there's so much you have to account for and she's playing with a lego car and she dropped the one of the little flat pieces so she's getting that now yes all right welcome back we have our lego pieces again yes i do there uh, if you come to kci there are lego little lego cars some people brought and they're fun to stim with this is actually incredibly fun to stim with it's very fun yes but yeah um as i was saying um it's just genuinely so much it's incredibly easy it's like so fast to become like not become but to make it unethical yeah like if you just go about it wrong or you're not thinking of every single thing that could happen and uh, that's really stressful like it would be so sick to just throw like 18 plus shows and like but um that would just alienate an entire audience yeah i don't know if i've been in a lot of i don't know if i've i don't i'm trying to think if i've been in a lot of all ages because i feel like most of the concerts and things i go to right those are at bigger venues like i don't even really gone to that many diy shows to be honest with you i think i've been like my my college friends hosted like raves on campus and then they got shut down because rip well they went to the well they kept going to the same spot and the cops showed up a few times and now they know and they're like okay whatever it's fine like and those were interesting because one it's like college students and a lot of a lot of stuff you said like i don't know I don't, is it, I don't, I'm like, is it actually challenging to keep out stuff like NOS? Like, I don't think it is. It's super hard. Oh, to keep it out entirely, I guess. Yes. People are going to bring in these giant canisters, though. Like, 
I guess not everybody does that though. The moment like they got on, they got outside the venue. Oh like, yeah. What can you do to yeah, prevent people from buying Nas on a publicly owned? You street? can't do that as long as you just enforce the rules inside of your, I guess, property. That's yeah. sort of where it goes into. But that's Yo, just like crazy, man. I uh, and people are hustling and like bustling, you know. Yeah, like, it's like every time I'd go to one of these little rave things, someone would have it, and it's like, okay, I mean, I guess you're making a fortune. I never got the hype personally as a the truck. I was like, I, I I never got the hype. It's just like a, it's literally just like a nicotine buzz. Basically. When you get into it, it's pretty cool, but not like I'm condoning it. No, don't do it. It's stupid. It is. Stu- it's really stupid, and you should never get into it. But yeah, like, don't get into any substances. This no. is a we're straight edge on the air. No, I'm not like straight edge. Don't I'm awesome. Much. Yeah, no. Uh, um, what are you gonna do? But don't be like me. Uh, be better, and uh, hey, because it, it gets terrible. Like it gets. It's like a slippery slope, like yep. it is with like a lot of drugs, and like mm-hmm. you, you soon it, w- one day it's like, oh my god, this is so fun. It's like a new thing, and it's like more than like nicotine, but it's less than weed. But oh yeah. Like, but it gets like it gets like really bad and almost like pathetic after a while and yeah uh, that's like, how I feel. I would do like I guess like eight balloons and like if people it, it gets concerning straight up and like, yeah that get, that can be very. And concerning. then you pass out. I passed out in front of a security guard because of Nas and that was genuinely humiliating because now random strangers are concerned about you and like and I'm like oh my god yeah now I gotta listen to them and like. Uh, it's That's, just, it's just like, oh my god! Don't yeah, get into it. Yeah, moral of the story. Th- there's no. Every time you think you're gonna do something and you can do it once, you're gonna like something eventually, and then you're gonna really like it, and then you're gonna keep doing it, and then it's not gonna be fun anymore, and then you're probably gonna have detrimental consequences. Absolutely. So you know, it's a threshold. Stay in school. Stay in school, kids. It's genuinely like a threshold. It's so much better to kind of like not do it once because then you know you can do it again. Yeah. You know, and it might be like, oh, yeah, I'll just not do it again. And then, like, then you years won't. go by, and then you do it again because you're like, oh, I can handle it. I mean, I did it that one time. and like, You never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. So aside from uh, Screamo, what else are you interested in musically? Um, I'm really into underground rap. Mm. Uh, like Netspan or Xavier So Bass. <laughs> I'm super into <laughs> My friends love those guys. Dude. Maybe not Netspan, but I have a friend who likes Xavier oh, a lot. They're so cool. And I really like him a lot, and um, I would love to interview Xavier Sobase. He's so I like cool. Xavier. I don't really like most of these these like I don't know what they call them new gens. This is a new scene, but like I like yeah. Xavier's cool. Xavier's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I, it's it's funny because it feels like I'm already too old for it, even though <laughs> I'm, like, I'm literally 22. Like yeah, that's not like we're in our. I'm like I'm almost 21. It's like the same thing. Like, I keep seeing these memes that are like when. It's like that clip from Smiling Friends of that guy saying, like, you, you, why are you old? Go back to your kids. And it's about, like, 21-year-olds at the Netspend show. Like, yeah, that's how, like, my gen- that's how my friends feel. Like, oh, we're old now that we're, like, in our 20s or we're 21. I'm like, shut up, dude. You're not. You're not. You're not old at all. You're not you're past 25. Like, I feel like that's it, when it's, like. It's man. not even. And even then, you're not even old then. You're just, like, an actual adult, I guess, at that point. I feel like once you hit that age, you're, like, finally having to, I don't know, get a, I don't know work full time i don't you probably still have to when you're like my age or her age but at the same time i don't know if i think your brain your brain solidifies in a way at 25 i think i think people say it becomes fully developed 25 yeah so that's when i guess all bets are off i suppose but yeah underground rap anything else um i really like indie rock i love so much indie rock um i'm really into alex g and teen suicide and uh uh elvis depressly even though he's that's a funny name terrible person apparently he's not nice or very mean and i really like car seat headrest oh yeah um because of course i do and uh as well as current joyous surf curse and i don't uh, know any of these i know some of these that's the fun thing about having somebody who knows like what they're doing musically at least has like more knowledge about this because i'm just like oh i don't know any of these bands cool i'm like I'm going to listen to Disturbs the Sickness for some reason. <laughs> That's all I've been listening to for the past, like, few days is literally just that record for some reason. And it's not even, like, a good new metal record. It's 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 past the point of being funny now. Now it's like, oh, I actually am starting to like it now. This is a problem. I need to, like, wean myself off of it like I, like I, like I you know, like you should. Mm. 
Not like legitimately. Some new metal is pretty good. I like the. I mean, Deftones is yeah, like universally it, liked. Yeah, everyone loves Deftones. I mean, it's good music. I do love them too. It's my favorite band. Banger, 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 banger. music. Indeed, indeed, mm-hmm. skis. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I, 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 I love new metal. I was in a huge phase of that last year. Not as much now. I'm sort of shifting out of that, but it's mostly just like yeah, old metal, whatever, just whatever, similar. But I guess now it's more getting into like hardcore punk. So we'll we'll see what's going on in there. I don't know. I guess I guess hit me up in like a year and you'll probably be like, oh, what's you what are you into now? And it's gonna be something entirely different. Maybe mm-hmm. not entirely. I, I I don't know. Do you think at like our age, like your sort of taste sort of solidify? Um, I don't know, cause like there's a lot of stuff I listen to in middle school that I still listen to now. Maybe like, yeah, it's when you're younger it sort of solidifies. I don't know. It does honestly. I feel like what happens is like you're 13 and you listen to a lot of cool sounds and then like you kind of like get like it beaten out of you depending on who you are but if you're yeah. like autistic like me i feel like you could relate it gets yeah, beaten out I of really. you by society uh, society society and uh but then like when you're a young adult you just go back you go back to it like yeah. you unlearn these like t- like hateful things that mm-hmm. you've been taught about about the things you're, you love or are passionate about and uh you get back into it when you're 20 and you realize oh i can just do whatever i want yeah you can just do it you can be into whatever i want you can be into whatever you want you're not going to get judged no. although some people still judge you but you can just tell them you know what i don't care i like i like me i'm me i'm do i'm gonna do me yeah like what are you gonna do about it yeah literally nothing as yeah. long as you're not hurting anybody, go go nuts. As long as you're not hurting yourself too, go nuts. I, yeah, I I'm gonna care. listen to my uh, my like embarrassing emo music, like Twenty One Pilots debut album. Really, yeah, I'm still really I'm, good. I'm, I haven't heard anything emo or screamo. It's I'm I, it's like I I hit hybrid theory and I was like, if I go to MCR and things like that, I don't know if I can hit that. I don't know if I'm like ready for that yet. Hybrid theory. That's Lincoln Park's first record. Oh that's yeah, that's like the end of the new metal thing. That was a good. That that's was a good. That's a good. Some good that's a pretty. I think it's a pretty good one. Pretty solid overall. Isn't the end in that one? It is. Yeah, I remember hearing that on the radio when I was like six. I was oh, like, I don't Dang. remember that. I remember seeing. I'd watch Transformers AMVs. Oh wow! Bring me back. <laughs> I'm not even. I don't think I even did that. I don't think I was like that in. Also, uh, for posterity's sake, I have to say this real quick. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of KUCI, its management, or the UC Board of Regents. This is Bass Tunes on KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. I'm Ari. We're here with Moxie, a promoter and, I guess, magazine filmer. What would you describe that as? I do it all. You do it all. And you can check me out on Instagram at B-A-S-E-D-T-U-N-E-S-K-U-C-I. Uh, how can people check you out on Instagram or whatever? Well, I run like a lot of Instagram p- accounts, but you can see me at, at underscore dot m zero x one three or at socal dot emo. Those are t- what the two main Instagram accounts that I use. Shout out. Yes. All right. I have a question. What are some what's some advice you can give to people who want to do the same thing as you in terms of promoting and like. I guess working in sort of underground music stuff, what is a, what are some tips you can give? What's some advice that you wish you knew when you started out? Um, just throw anything at the wall, honestly, until you see what sticks, just like, you know, like talk to as many people as you can and yeah. like talk to bands. Like, don't be afraid to try to ask people to work uh, with you and um, you know just like literally you just gotta do genuinely whatever it takes to make things work as long and also like like as long as you're not like hurting anyone else along the way or like screwing anyone over like yeah because it's the most most important thing about being in this kind of business is like the relationships you make and the connections you make like yeah because of one connection I made during like the Denny's era of my life uh, I started being able to throw shows in the streaming scene and you know it was yeah. all because of one person That's Ray Garcia at Pit Promotions thank you shout out to that guy yeah so it's really about the friends you make and the connections you make and just doing what you got to do to make things happen and honestly people respond to Instagram DMs way more than you think yeah also pay your bands fairly yeah that's also true I feel like if you pay I feel like if you pay them fairly, they're more likely to recommend you to other people and to bring you on and to actually keep coming. And Absolutely. Yeah. Greed is, like, very much not respected 
at all like uh you know the moment you kind of show signs that you're greedy it's kind of like oh it's going to be a wrap like it's going to be over for you yeah um, it's jover jover it's no so seriously jover. seriously yeah so yeah i guess that's what I, that's all i have to say so just i guess just keep trying things and talk i feel like that's the biggest thing networking it's so hard for me to do this too because I need to just talk to people and I'm just mm. like when I'm in person it's like so awkward it's like I was at a concert one time and you know I do the marketing in case I was like oh maybe I can cover your show maybe I can you can come on the show for an interview or whatever yeah and I'm just like such a uh what's the word coward that it's not like I know it's fine it's actually a big deal but it's so funny because I get so nervous I'm like just do it I'm like if I had a liaison to do this would be so much easier I just want to do the interviewing part that's super real like having to do the um like the reaching out part is so is, is it's a scary because it is. you don't want to be embarrassed you don't want them to say no but you can't be embarrassed if you're putting yourself out there and nah, like, you really can't that's the no. hardest thing and that literally gets your foot everywhere and oh. that's the hardest thing that is the hardest thing and it's super frustrating because it feels nigh impossible for some people not that it's nigh impossible for me probably not for you because you've been doing this for enough time where you mm-hmm. kind of just say I don't care. Let's just do it. But it was at one point. Oh, for I sure. I was super. I'd always be super. I have. I mean, I have like really terrible anxiety and you're like I'm autistic and like. Shut up. <laughs> no, I'm on the spectrum. That's why I said shut up. No, I know. It's just that was just. That yeah, it's really funny. funny. But um, like you know, it's like hard. But like I don't know. At least with being autistic, even though it like kind of like held me back, but it also kind of like really aided me because it allows me to kind of like observe people and like kind of like jot down notes of how people act and like how people like introduce themselves and like how people talk and like kind of like puts it all into like an algorithm in my brain and like kind of allows me to like know what to say when it comes to being in these spaces it's it's really like (laughs) it's really like a formula you know like especially when it comes to work like you just have to say the right thing at the right time to the right person and like that's really all it takes to like throw a show is like because that's all it all all you need to do is get the right people at the right place at the right time um yeah how long were you in the scene i guess before starting to throw your own stuff like eight months no like almost a year I okay because i i got into the scene at this like diy show um like january 30th of 2019 and i threw my first show december 14th 2019 oh that's pretty that's pretty close huh yeah so you would generally say that oh yeah because i was thinking i think one thing i heard which was that was interesting is that you know if you want to like do this stuff you, you should go to you should go to shows and support it religiously so I was, yeah i wanted to see if that was a similar thing you agreed on because i figured that's a really big thing because if people know that hey this person likes what he's like what they're doing you know it's, it's all about thing. getting your foot in you know it's like because there's like it's all about like finding a way to contribute you know and you don't have to contribute always like sometimes you can contrib- contribute as little as sharing a concert flyer on your instagram story or that's you, inviting that your can, friends it's almost enough sometimes it really is because like just getting helping getting people there and like helping spread the love spread the music is like so important but yeah. you can do so much you can buy a video camera and film shows and post them onto your youtube channel although probably don't do that if that everyone else is already doing that yeah um because then someone it becomes usually a crowd up, someone usually is end up is already ending up getting paid to do that anyways yeah like i mean they're like I, I, in the screamo scene there's like oh my god so many media people and yeah i feel bad because now i am becoming a media person because i'm taking photos but i'm start. also taking photos of my friend's band so yeah and i'm like i gotta start being one of the media people too you should oh, yeah you should, like interview people at shows what i'm trying i'm tr- i think the thing is like i for me personally i like to have people come down here and do this i like it a little more structured like that but at the same time i know that a big thing is just go to the shows and ask to interview them there but i'm like i can't do that i need to think and prep a little and I normally don't prep that much for this show anymore, which is a bad thing. But it just depends on the conversation, right? If yeah. the person's cool, if the person can at least have some sort of rapport, or they can just be like, okay, of me just yapping my butt off for however much time about mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. then that's cool. I don't know. I I don't think how many. It's all based on the person and the circumstances. Like, yeah. 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 I did that actually. I was doing interviews at uh, concerts and stuff um with verse magazine we interviewed julie at their concert we interviewed versus self numb ears party hats at their telegram show last year and there's uh, a lot of 
names people might recognize there. Yes, and uh, I recognize two of them. Interviewed. Uh, I know Mikey uh, before I joined the mag. Uh, interviewed Versera. Um, uh, one of my shows that I threw actually. Funny enough. Shout out. And um, is that where you met him? Actually, no. I was driving home from Oregon during the show sadly but oh man i didn't get to meet him but i ended up just uh i saw that he posted a video of my show and i hit him up and i was like hey i saw you did this it's really funny uh i would really love to work with you though sometime and then the rest is history and now he's like one of my really close friends and shout out yeah that's the thing you just got to get your foot in the door and it's so tough sometimes but you just got to do it you, you need someone to push you and be like Get your foot in the door. No, literally. You just never know where the... Not only after you get your foot in the door, you just, like, never know what the steps that you take afterwards will, like, take you. Yeah. Like, when I started working for Verse, like... Or, like, working, but, like, you know, doing the stuff for Verse, like, I never would have thought still that working. I'd be... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, still work. I never would have imagined that it would lead to me, like, interviewing, like, Wisp or, like, helping out with that and uh producing these like shows that i love and like you just like and not only that but it all happened like in a year you know a year can be a lot of time it really can like and even if you you don't get accomplished a lot in a year like the following year could be even better yeah you just need to keep going forward pretty much and like just trying to do what you think you gotta do all right um let me think you have any tips for people doing interviews maybe like what did you learn doing interviews about if you have any knowledge of like like what 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 to ask how to act things like that um like for me whenever i would talk to people already i like ask them a bunch of questions about like whatever just like when i was normally just conversing with someone i'd always ask them Uh questions about themselves so like i would kind of like I was able to translate that really easily into interviewing people because like having the skill of being able to ask someone a question and then seeing them drop a, like a crumb of information that you can ask about further, like yeah. ask them even further. Like, uh, like, I, I mean, I can't think of an example off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah. I, I feel like I've done this a couple of times, even right now. I feel like I think I, I you pick up on a couple things and it's funny cause yeah, at some point it just becomes natural i don't know if it's just human conversation obviously i'm not like the i feel like i was a fairly good public speaker and things like that but mm. you know i wasn't great at like people i don't know and people that in situations that i'm not very certain about then i get all awkward and sort of you know mealy mushy mouth or however you want to call it but before that it's like fine like if i know the person or if i have at least some amount of an idea of this is what's going on then it's just like okay let's do it yeah. so i don't know at least just yeah, here's a here's a skill for I think I think literally for all of what we've been talking about the number one skill is just to talk to people and figure out how to do that because they're people too like, yeah literally and you can't be afraid to ask questions you can't be afraid to be embarrassed like you can be embarrassed but like just like keep going yeah like, you gotta push through it because honestly it's more embarrassing to stop and not finish what you're doing than just to just keep going even if you mess up you gotta roll through the punches yes. you have to do it I don't exactly. know. How long did it take for you to not be like, I don't know if you were, but I'm say be very awkward about this sort of stuff. I don't know. I was always just like about interviewing or just in general, general, anything, anything. Let's say it took me a, a long time. Like I remember like, well, my skills were being put to the test when I was like the first year of being in the punk scene. Cause like when you were like in a DIY scene, it's like, it's like, the first kind of like taste of freedom and individualism yeah. and like being amongst your peers and like or with more like-minded people so it's kind of like really nervous because it seems like oh my god everyone else has been here and like know what they're doing and i don't know what i'm doing and like um but you know like the more kind of like friends i made at shows because it's honestly really easy it can be really easy to make a friend at a show yeah and um you know like just like you gotta start small and get bigger and i started talking to more and more people and then eventually that just kind of led to me talking to bands like people on bands um like my good friend yavi from kiowa or like all the guys in kiowa honestly and like just like started to hang out with them more and just kind of realizing like oh they're just like you know they're people too even yeah. though they just they also happen to shred 
and like be awesome and super cool yeah it, everyone's just people at the end of the day if you can just like find some amount of common i'm of the mind where it's a if i can find some sort of common ground with the individual then i'm like hey let's talk then yeah. we can just keep doing if i don't a little more challenging but maybe but th that's sort of the number one thing yeah. if there's something i can at least explain it talk to them about that i know and that i think they know then i'll be like hey so it's just it's hard i don't know if you're in a DIY scene, they are just like you. Oh, you know? 100. Oh, in that case, then yeah. Yeah. In like, that case. And uh, yeah, and honestly, even like like talking to like even people kind of like leaving their DIY scenes, like Julie and Wisp, they're also just people like you, you know. But just like happen to have the right circumstances, like uh, lead them to where they are, and uh, you know, there's uh, no real reason to be afraid, especially if it's just a momentary like. Cha exchange like you know you might as well just like do it and yeah, not be afraid wholeheartedly yeah. let me think here <sighs> sorry I'm trying to think of something <laughs> no no it's chill <laughs> alright let's see um what else are you into aside from uh let's say the DIY scene and like things like that oh well, no let me do this first actually what is your sort of ultimate goal for all of this? Do you want to do this as a full-time career if you want it, if you're able to? What do you think? I would love to live in an apartment and like be alive. That would be so cool. Like that's, uh, that's the main goal is to live comfortably and not even like comfortably. Like I'm like just want to be able to like have an apartment and like just be still be able to express myself creatively. I mean, it'd be cool if I got like recognized for the things that I do and like. I don't know, like, had a YouTube documentary on me, like, in <laughs> eight years. <laughs> that'd, that'd be pretty. That'd be super sick. And um, I guess my my end-all, be-all goal is to, like, uh, create in-person kind of, like, trans communities and not just have them, like, at least from my experience, just have them be at clubs or, like, on the Internet and actually like have trans neighborhoods and trans businesses and stuff like that. Like a whole block, kind of like the transgender district in San Francisco. That's but. a thing. Yeah, it is a oh, thing. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know anything about it, but there is a transgender district in San Francisco. And I would Shut love up. to have like real, like communities of like, um, like trans people just like able to like walk out and then see a trans owned business and stuff like that. I think that would be cool. I would love to start something like that. Yeah, that seems interesting. I do agree with you just from like observing it. Cause I, I had some friends in the community and just sort of observing that it, se it seems very, I don't know, just ins very online. It is very, very online. And Twitter. Yeah. Most of the it ends up cause it's, it's so funny. Cause like half the time it's like my interest, it's like, Oh, it's a trans person doing that. Like, Oh, that's interesting. A lot of the interest that like, that I end up doing it's like the coolest coders and all these random people. Oh yeah, coolest everything. It's like oh oh wow okay super smart group of people. That's insane. Best beat makers around. If the DJ ain't trans, I mm. don't want them. Mm -mm. I don't want them. No for I real. I don't want them. I mean, oh uh, yeah, but no yeah. I would love there to that, be man. no. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I would really love to, cause like I see like an active community online but i would love to see it even more in person where it's not just one night a week but it's like all the time yeah and yeah. i'm sure there's some places like that out there that i don't know about because i grew up in orange county and yeah I'll see. it's not really awesome to be queer and transgender not in orange particular, county not particularly no no but yeah i guess that's my end all be all goal but for the time being it's mostly just staying alive and like keep doing what i'm doing and maybe run a venue like consistently and like just like yeah i think that would be super awesome yeah i hope you can make that especially the be live part that'd be cool that would wanna, be super cool we don't want nobody dying out here i know that would be super lame that would be very lame indeed mm -hmm. what are you into outside of the promoting stuff then and just like aside from the music what are some of your other interests and things that you do in your free time i'm super into art um but I'll, uh, okay but real i'm usually bed rotting like uh during the weekdays if i'm not working uh or hanging out with friends i'm like on instagram all day oh uh, boy. but i'm also uh super passionate about like fine art painters like rothko uh mark rothko or uh, like basquiat mm -hmm. and uh Rushenberg, i think and i'm also really into photographers like uh f i think his name's franz klein 
but I might be I wrong. Don't recall that name. And but Dash Snow. He was one of the first like street photographers. Oh, that's cool. He was really cool, and I, I really like Dash Snow's work as well. He he actually is the what inspired me to get into f- like photography, uh, or at least more passionate about photography. Mm. And um, I'm really into video games like CS:GO. And oh, you play uh, Counter Strike? I do play Counter Strike. I don't. That's a really I, good I can't. Game. I can't do it. It's too hard. It is really hard, and I've only just. It's mainly because I've been playing it since I was like. 2015 to like almost oh, like yeah. 10 years <laughs> yeah i got cs i remember i got my first macbook or something in like 2013 i asked my friend should i get count global offensive or source and he told me to buy source so i bought i played source mm. i play like servers in that but i don't know i never like i could never be that good at it like i'm good at i'm i'm solid at like other shooters but just the ones where you die so quickly i can't do it you gotta do csgo because it's a lot more fun in my opinion and um no, yeah, I get you. Um, but I'm also really into the, those kind of realistic shooter games like uh, uh, Rising Storm 2. Oh, I have a friend who loves those types of games. <sighs> I played Rising Storm 2. It's not bad. It's a really awesome game. Yeah. I love, like, big games like that where it's, like, super chaotic. Like, I've, recently I've been mostly playing, like, uh, Battlefield 1. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about redownloading that. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's a, oh my it's god! It's like good. the best game it's ever. It's very solid. It doesn't yeah. get better than that. I mean, it would be cool if they added like more gore, and, like stuff like that. I think that would be cool. But I get why they didn't, because it's already like it's already pushing it to one. the limits. I mean, you play World at War. That was pretty gory. I haven't played in a World uh, War. Uh, like the classic Call of Duty. Yeah, like the, the the like the 2008 one. That one I never played. That was a good time, one. But I had a friend. I don't know. I played the campaign on it and I the I, zombies on it. It oh has yeah. such a nice kind of like feel. Nice aura. It has an amazing aura. Plus that just brings aura. me back. Yeah. Plus, 30 <laughs> Plus 37 aura. That's mm-hmm. what the kids are saying now. We got to be hip with the times. Dude, it's so funny. My friend is like a middle school teacher, and he's telling me. Um, well, I mean, I just met him recently, so, but, yeah, um, he's a, he's a middle school teacher, and he's, like, telling me, like, how he's got to be, like, like, hey, chat, today we're learning about, and, like, you're all not, these. You're not, you're serious. I'm actually dead serious. Oh, my goodness. Because, like, that's kind of what you got to do to, like, kind of, like, how to get young people to listen to you. Hey, and chat. I, I know. Also, it's kind of, like, it adds kind of, like, that level of humor, because it's, like, an authority figure. Like a teacher that's supposed to be like serious and like all this. Yeah, stuff. I get that. That's just so funny to me. It hey, is. Chat. Uh, hey chat. Hey chat. Hey chat. Um, that's kind of beta of you to not do your homework. <laughs> this is something he actually told me that he said. That is that is insane to me. That's it is insane. Really funny. Um, really <sighs> really silly. Um, I don't. I just don't recall teachers like doing things like that when I was in like middle and high school i, I don't think they were just funny in different ways yeah i guess just like, like oh we're hip with the times we're hip with the times i don't know most of the most of them were like kind of not the oldest people in the world my uh my boss posted something that's like sign this like facebook meme about like slang like like slang and it was so funny to me because i was like man this is like at least five years out of date just on our team's chat i was like because he has like i guess he has like a daughter like a teenager da- teenage daughter or something like that I don't know. It was funny because I'm like, as a Gen Zer, some of this stuff is accurate. Not all of it is, though. <laughs> and it was super funny. Like what? Like what are the? What are some of these new words? What are these new words? I think it's like the way you go about it is you have to like say it like you've always said it. Yeah, and you, you can't, can't make act- a thing yes, about it. That's the important part. That's how people can tell. Like if you're like, oh hey chat. And you're like looking around or whatever. You you gotta be like hey, slick. You gotta like chat. slip it in there. And uh, like, especially if you move on really quickly, it, it, like it, the kids are like, "What?" You gotta show you gotta show your friend the Germa substitute teacher bit. I don't, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking? I about? love Germa. I ha- I haven't seen that bit though. Oh, I'm gonna show it to you after this. This is so stupid. <laughs> I I like good. I like the vine sauce Joel Mark Skeletor more than the Germa guy. I it's, love Germa. He I, just Germa's speaks co- to me. Germa's cool, and he's like pretty. He's like pretty cool, and he seems like a nice guy. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I just, I didn't grow up with him, and I didn't really like wa- get his sense of humor as much. But it's cool, it's interesting. Like so many different like online creators, so many people get so into them, and they do so many. They just have like a whole community just because of just the way they are and the way they act. Mm-hmm. And it's funny too because you think about it. I don't know how much of them are just like a performance because that's what I think about hearing streamers are you're just performing basically. But it's like almost for like eight to ten hours a day, and that's the kind of crazy part. It's like how much. Of the real slips out, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm fairly 
like I was thinking about that because I'm like I, a lot of radio people, you know, you like a persona or whatever. And I I went to this UC review to uh, uh, something work related. <sighs> what is it? Oh yeah, the UC Radio Network conference, and they were like the some people from All Things Considered and some other people, right? Some like straight up like you know big radio people from like uh, public radio around here, Heck and they yeah. were and they were like, yeah, you just have to like you have to do a story, and I'm like, man, I can't do that, <laughs> I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I have a good speaking voice. You give me a script to read, I can probably do that, but you know. It's so lame to just this, not, like, be authentic. No, but know? it is like being authentic, but you're also sort of shaping it into sort of... It's like a news anchor type of thing. You're sort of shaping it into mm. something that gets the listeners engaged, something relatable. You have to thread that line. Streamers are interesting in that because they're very... Because you think they're honest, but a lot of the time, you know, they're probably not, you know. They're all just doing their own like thing. Like the KC9 stats or like them. They definitely have, like... Just like a formula, I would say, instead of they the know script. What works. They just know what works. They like they got the they got their bits and it's almost like a soundboard almost. I feel like that's kinda how it works, is like they got the the soundboard kinda locked in and like programmed. Hey, hey into guys, me, Casey Nice, I'm gonna go skate around and talk about cameras or whatever. I don't even know what does he even do? What that is, is not K Kai C Nice. You said Casey Neistat. Oh, I meant Kai. Sinat. Oh, I know Kai Sinat. Yeah, Kai, Kai, the Kai Sinat guy. Yeah. Oh, these Kai Sinat skibbity toilet. I know he. I know he. He yells a lot, and he has like a lot of like he's, celebrities on. Yeah, like you know, he had I, Kevin I've Hart on. Yeah, I've seen clips of him. He's he's all right. I don't really. I fell off that whole thing. I show speed came out, and then I saw like a security breach clip or something that he did. And that's sort of where I fell off. I see why he's successful, though. No, no, yeah, he's fun. These guys are funny, and they know what works. Just like I feel like they're just past my time a little bit. Oh, definitely. I feel like I don't know. I stopped kind of being into the YouTube stuff. Like, I mean, I was mo like back back then when I was like a kid. It was like it was like PewDiePie before oh, yeah. he was a demon, and then Markiplier, who's a sweet angel still forever, and. Uh, Jack Septicai. Yeah, it's always those three. Those are like the three of our generation. I feel yeah. like P.O.I. is just crazy now. He's just, he's just in his. What is he doing? He's just in Japan with his wife and just like having kids. Sure. He's ah. he's just chilling with his kid. I guess I don't know. You got he, into that like he went on that bridge that one time. Yeah, he just he he, he 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 dude. And also not only that, but like honestly, looking back on the um, it's definitely a bit too his edgy. beef with the um. What was it? T series or T series? Yeah, he was just, he was kind of just being racist. Oh really? In, in the song, yeah. Oh, I, I feel I, I don't I, remember any. I of feel this like he was. He was saying he was saying some crazy stuff in those like diss tracks. T series yeah. isn't even anything. They're just like a conglomerate channel. It's just I don't even think there's like a huge like rival. It's just like don't they just like post music videos and stuff? What do they do? They post like music videos and clips and like I think yeah, I, it's Hollywood like Hollywood. It, yeah, stuff, it's, it's like it's like a. Uh, I don't know, Indian, like, Vivo mixed with, like, other stuff. I don't know if Vivo is even a thing anymore. I guess it technically is. Yeah. It technically is, but I don't think it's called so-and-so Vivo. I think it's just called their I, artist I name. I don't even get what Vivo even is because it, it doesn't a, seem like a production company. It I just seems like a publishing thing? I think it's just, like, an alliance of publishers or something like that. I assume they just made a company. That's how it always works. I don't you know. you see the Vivo on, like, random stuff? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to look this up. But, yeah. Yeah. I think we're hitting the end of the show here. So I'm going to say this. Plug your stuff, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. We it's, can check it out. Uh, Instagram at underscore dot M zero X one three. It's uh, under, at underscore dot M zero X one three. And uh, also SoCal emo, SoCal dot emo. Um, and uh, also Versed Magazine and Rocket 88, which is where I'm... Uh, throwing shows and booking uh, yeah. right now shout out go check those out do what you want with them hope you enjoy you can check me out on instagram at b-a-s-e-d-t-u-n-e-s-k-u-c-i on instagram that's bass tunes k-u-c-i thank you again for coming on the show stay tuned next week for i don't know but same bass time same bass channel on 88.9 fm and k-u-c-i.org if you want to come on the show do what she didn't call in. Or, I guess, maybe not call in, because I don't know when I'm going to be on the air next, next week. Hit me up. We can have all kinds of cool stuff. Hopefully, we got some cool stuff in the summer. It was great talking with you. Really cool. Yes. Thank you very much Thank for coming. Thank you for on. having me. You're it was very welcome. Really fun. All right.
Well, stay base, everybody, and... Wait. Oh, whoops, hold on. I'm doing this <laughs> stupid outro thing. I'm sorry. That was real. <laughs> All right. Keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. It's Fred Durst Friday! I do this bit every time. I just have the outro music now. It makes it way harder. That was so much fun.